Tell me one thing. Do you feel sad? Or maybe lonely? Or depressed? Anxious, tired, burnt out, full of dread or despair? Maybe you feel alienated from other people, like you're apart or adrift. If so, you are not alone. Everyone, practically everyone, is feeling the same way. They are the dominant feelings of our time. You've probably heard this described as a mental health crisis. And that's true. Something has gone wrong with our heads, with our mental health. Something is out of whack. Just take a look at the world around us. We live in an age of overwhelming atomization. More and more people report that they feel deeply lonely. Americans, especially young Americans, report having fewer friends and fewer romantic partners or meaningful connections than did people of past generations. Perhaps not coincidentally, rates of depression and anxiety and of behaviors associated with them are going up, way up. More people than ever are using antidepressant medications like SSRIs. And more and more people are committing suicide or considering it. In June 2020, a quarter of young Americans seriously considered committing suicide. Suicides and drug overdoses, classified as deaths of despair, have become so common that they have driven down American life expectancy from its peak in 2014. By 2021, Fentanyl overdose was the most common form of death among Americans aged 18 to 45. All around us, we detect a mood of pessimism, nihilism, self-destruction, fewer people having children, more people killing themselves, more and more people dying from overdoses, more and more people becoming dependent on pharmaceuticals. Talk to young people or students or really anyone, and it's hard to deny this simple truth. Something is very wrong. But the response to this quote-unquote mental health crisis is a very telling one. Our major institutions from schools, colleges, workplaces, how do they respond? They say that it's something as simple as better work-life balance. They might encourage you to take regular five-minute breaks from work, or give you Zoloft, maybe suggest you up your prescription. They might suggest you push a notification on your phone to let you know if you spent too much time staring at your screen. Mm -hmm, they do everything except the one thing, which is to solve the essential problem. The real problem is that the system itself will keep you complacent and productive enough for its purposes. But the real problem, the depression, the anxiety, the loneliness, that does not go away. Because we're treating this as an individual problem and not a social problem. They turn a social problem, a political problem, into a biological one. And while that might make sense on an individual level, it does not make sense from the perspective of a society because it is not normal for so many people to be this depressed. It is not normal for so many people, especially young people, to be so reliant on antidepressants. It is not normal for them to feel so alone, for them to kill themselves at such high rates, for them to report such high rates of anxiety and loneliness and depression. That is not normal. There is something really wrong. Mental illness, depression, anxiety, these may manifest neurologically, but they are socially and spiritually rooted. If so many people in a society are depressed, if so many people are killing themselves, if so many people are reliant on pills just trying to avoid suicide, that says something, something bad 
about the society in question. We are the loneliest people in human history. There has never been a society as atomized, as alienated, as alone as we are now. It is unprecedented in the hundreds of thousands of years that humans have been on Earth for us to be this separated from each other. Because the truth is that at a basic level, we are hardwired for connection. We need other people. We find ourselves, our identities, our meaning and our purpose through other people. We are social animals. We have an urge to love and to be loved, to be recognized, to be respected and to belong. We need other people. We need family. We need friends. We need a community. And we live in a society now where for far too many people, those things are impossible. Let's begin with a man named Robert Putnam. A few decades ago, Putnam was a famous professor, a sociologist, who studied the trends and changes in American life. And in the 1990s, Putnam was taking a look at what had shifted in America since the 1960s. And as he looked, Putnam began to find something disturbing. American community was falling apart. If you look back at American history, you find something kind of incredible. The level of organic community in the United States, from its founding to just a few decades ago, was remarkably strong. Go back a hundred years and look at the communities around you. Towns and cities in America used to be places with vibrant and thriving communal life. They had labor unions, charity associations, gardening clubs, bridge clubs, churches, scout troops. People went to local parades. They knew their neighbors. They knew what was going on in their community. And that sense of community is what gave meaning to their lives. It's how they met their friends, their spouses. It's where they raised their kids. It's what filled out the contours of their lives. It's what made them happy. You could be an ordinary person, living an ordinary life, and you could find dignity and community, a sense of worth in these places. You had a social world all around you. You had a net of support all around you. But by the 1990s, as Putnam was looking at the country around him, he found a social world in decay. Because starting in the 1960s and accelerating ever since then, all these communities and institutions had been collapsing. Church attendance was falling. Local clubs were closing down. Local newspapers were losing readers. Unions were losing members. Families were falling apart. Community was disintegrating. Americans were withdrawing, going inward. They stopped even knowing who their neighbors were. They stopped going to parades or civic events. They stopped being a part of any real local community at all. Even things as simple as local bowling leagues were disappearing. Putnam wrote that Americans had begun, in his words, bowling alone. Americans were now spending more and more time without other people. They were expressing lower and lower levels of social trust, not just in their leaders, but in each other the social fabric of American life was unraveling. And once you understand that basic fact, the decline of organic communities, the last few decades of American life start to make a lot of sense. Because without organic communities around them, people were deprived of the support and comfort and stability that they had once enjoyed, not to mention friendship and love. They regarded each other with more suspicion. Life became zero-sum. Everyone was in it for themselves. And when everyone around you is a stranger, life just becomes about you, about getting what's yours, 
about becoming a CEO or a billionaire, getting out on top, and screwing over everyone else if necessary. All of life has been consumed by the logic of the market. Everything becomes a marketplace. Everything can be bought or sold. Working, earning, competing, consuming, that becomes the sum total of life. Money becomes more important than life itself. And what did people get for this? Life didn't get better, it got worse. You work longer hours for lower wages. You paid more than your parents or your grandparents did to go to school or to see a doctor. Owning your own home, raising children, these became a lot more difficult. It got harder just to keep your head above water. And you'd have to do it without the support that your parents or your grandparents had enjoyed. Fewer friends, fewer relationships, less community. Life became colder and emptier and more unforgiving. More people living without human companionship. And even the most successful people were unhappy. They reported high rates of depression, of anxiety. Even they were frustrated and lonely. And young people just coming into the world, they have been the worst off. Without organic communities, everyone becomes the same. Identity becomes a matter of consumer preference. In the age of the internet, atomized people drift into alternate realities where they can be anyone but themselves. Cults, extremism, scams. Amid the vast meaninglessness of a society in decay, some just forge new identities. At first it was just young people, and then it was everyone else. We spent more time with electronics than we did with humans. Our identities were shaped by algorithms written by corporations in order to make us buy stuff we don't need. Social media, designed to make you feel angry and alone, but also to addict you, that became the core of our social existence. ASMR videos that simulate intimacy. Internet porn addiction that makes real romance almost impossible. Video streams of people playing video games and talking. These are all substitutes for the human companionship that is lacking everywhere else in our society. It only accelerated the atomization, the loneliness, the depression. Older people, once treated as sources of guidance and wisdom, began to be viewed as useless, wastes of space, shuffled into nursing homes. High rates of elder loneliness has led to elder abuse and high rates of elder suicide. That is the world that we created. Cold and empty. It's no wonder why people become dependent on antidepressant drugs why more people die from overdoses, why more express a desire to kill themselves, to not exist at all. These are what you call morbid symptoms. They are reflections of a society in which the market has taken over all of life, in which human community and human values have all but disappeared. Traditional forms of community and solidarity that have given meaning to human life have been dismantled. Life has become about lines on a graph going up and down. Human community has not only been neglected, but actively destroyed. All of human life has undergone an impoverishment. We live in a society that is structurally unable to meet our social needs. The need for community, for love, for being with other people. It is a society that whittles our humanity down to statistics. Stock market lines tick up, well, so do death tolls. The abstraction of money has become more real than our actual lives. We've become a society without meaning, a society that wants you to be constantly working, constantly consuming. It doesn't necessarily want you to talk to other people. It doesn't want you to be part of a community. It doesn't want you to find meaning outside the market. A society that wants you to be an atomized consumer so that it can manipulate you. It wants you to be an atomized worker so that it can exploit you. 
The reason you feel this way is because you want to live a real life. You want to be with other people, to join hands with them, to work in meaningful pursuit, to recognize them as friend, as partner, a child, a person. And no matter how materially satisfying any society is, we are yearning for something, something that can exist, that should exist, but that our current system cannot allow to exist. We are yearning for community. We are yearning for other people, for connection, for friendship. We are yearning for a world where those things can exist. And that world can exist. In small glimpses, in small moments, it actually already does. It is a world that is struggling to be born. There is nothing impossible about that world because the ultimate truth about it is that it is something we can imagine. We can create a more beautiful world, a more wonderful world, a more human world. I'm Marianne Williamson for the Gravel Institute.